Okay, so welcome everyone that is uh, with us on the virtual youth festival district rep and coach briefing call. And I am here as uh, your hostess for the afternoon, Angela Neto here with uh, Special Olympics Maryland. So we will begin to talk about what this whole program is all about. You will meet some of our key players and some of the uh, overall what's going to happen with this particular festival. This is a opportunity for um, Special Olympics Maryland and our student athletes, particularly in the IUS area at high school, to do something uh, extraordinary. So um, with that, here's our agenda for this particular presentation. Um, we will have just quick introductions uh, as to some of our panel guests. Um, we will be talking about what the actual fitness challenge is all about. Of course, you know, with SOMD, we're gonna have administration. So there'll be some forms to talk about uh, the timeline and uh, of course your coaches resources. So for your reps that are here with us, this will be the area that you can emphasize to your coaches as to where to find everything. So again, I am Angela Neto. For those of you who I've not had a chance to meet um, at any particular event, I work uh, here in the Special Olympics Maryland headquarters office here in Baltimore, but uh, I've been around for about a year now and gotten a chance to do all kinds of different uh, sporting events such as tennis and strength and conditioning and bocce. So with COVID, we got uh, kind of locked out with uh, outdoor bocce and track and field, but here is our start of our new school year and we're gonna start with something a little bit different this time. Then we have my co-producer here, Monica. Go ahead and let everybody know a little bit about you, please. Sure, hey everyone, my name is Monica Clock. I'm the manager of fitness for youth in schools at Special Olympics International. And um, I've been around for about two years now and we've been really focused on promoting fitness in the school space um, during those two years and really excited about this new um, opportunity and, and to see how it works um, in our schools and um, here to support with anything that Maryland needs during this process. Thanks, Monica. Would you do me a huge favor? And I'm going to bring up our other Monica. Can you just show, tell everybody a little bit about what she does for me as well, please? Yeah, absolutely. So Monica Forker, she's our senior manager of fitness. Um, she's been around for uh, several years now and is really kind of oversees all of our fitness work and, and the programming that we're doing um, across the board at Special Olympics. Um, anything fitness, she's kind of our go-to person. So she um, unfortunately couldn't be here today, but she's um, fully supporting this endeavor and um, everything that we have going with it. Excellent, thank you, Monica, I appreciate it. And John Paul, if you could unmute yourself and tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing, please. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm uh, John Paul St. Germain, I'm the Senior Director for Sport Partnerships and Sport Development at Special Olympics International. And um, I've been at the organization with 20 plus years now. Um, but uh, love this uh, opportunity here because we, we're aligning several different initiatives between working with schools, working on health and fitness, and, uh, and then driving uh, sport partnerships uh, in all of this. So uh, it's a really good, good project, and we're excited to have you guys involved with this. Excellent. Thank you so much. I apologize for the added H in your name there. No, no worries. No worries. I'll worry. make sure I, I added that out for you. So <laughs> thank you. Yep. Uh, so basically now what we're going to be uh, able to do is we're going to talk about what is this fitness challenge. And so this is something that, again, this is a pilot program. This is something new that uh, Special Olympics National and International have asked of us here in Maryland. So these are the components and what we are asking of you as a district rep and as a coach. So this is going to be, and I'm not gonna read every single thing, so I'm gonna just highlight a few things. So this is a seven week competition, and this will be able to award athletes and unified partners, and coaches will be able to submit scores for three fitness tests over a, a period of those seven weeks so that you have a starting point, a middle and an end point to see how you improve. And then at the end of this entire challenge, there'll be some divisioning that will take place and we will be able to move on to the greater part of this program, which is hopefully the international portion of the festival that will take place 
uh, in virtually in Bangkok, Thailand on November 20th, which celebrates youth national or no international youth day. So that is the overview of the challenge. But what are the components? So this is what we're looking at here. So you've got three components. Uh, and some of our athletes, this is what we already compete in, so they'll be familiar with it. The first is the standing long jump. And um, underneath here, you will be able to, once I give you the PowerPoint, to click on the video. And it'll help you as a coach to understand how to work with your student athletes, either both virtually or in person, on how to uh, measure and work with your athlete on how to do a standing long jump. The next one is a 10 by five meter shuttle run. This again, so all of these components are and meant to be able to do from your home. Um, if that is not available, then perhaps work with your coach or a teacher to do something at the local school if you need to as well. But the next would be a 10 by five meter shuttle run. And then the last is the maximum plank hold. So that's just a little bit different than what we do with strength and conditioning. Uh, we do um, sit-ups, uh, but the uh, Special Olympics International felt that this is something that um, our student athletes could do and wanted to do a little bit something different and try this for a challenge. So these are our three fitness challenge components. I'll stop here to see if anybody's got any questions on anything? No? All right. Well, that's good. We'll move on. So just to let you know here at the very bottom of this slide, you'll see click on green boxes to activate videos in the next three slides. So on the next slide, you say, well, how does all of this work? Well, embedded into your presentation, and I'll just do this as an example, is the actual standing long jump fitness assessment. This will go on for a few minutes and will describe exactly what things that you need to do. So from what I understand that you can't hear the audio and my apologies for that. Um, this will be something again that when you get the presentation yourself, you should be able to hear the audio for this. And uh, with that, if you have any questions about any of the setup, or any of the, the ways that things need to be measured, as always, you can reach out to me and, and figure out what it is that you need to do. So I'm going to move on because each of the next subsequent slides show all of the video that will have um, the description for everything. So this is our next couple of slides. Again, not going to read everything verbatim because you will also be getting a coach's manual. And basically we have the timeline that will talk about your introduction week that will be able to get your athletes the proper setup, the timing and the form so that over the next seven weeks, they can build their confidence, their strength and their endurance on getting better and better and improving with their fitness. So as with the training, as with anything else, you also may want to a, um, express to your coaches that they could have some sort of individual plans um, so that they're not just training on these specific events, but they have some alternates so that they can also work with their agility and their strength that could lead to improvements in these particular um, events that they get uh, either timed or they're measured for. So encourage your coaches to vary the plan and the program when training so that the uh, student athletes don't get bored and that they have something to look forward to and have some fun. So these are your basic supplies that you are going to need either as a coach or as a district rep. This is the one place where I am going to ask uh, a question. So if you see in the far left that Special Olympics Maryland, we will be providing you a tape measure for every competitor. 
uh, and what I will need to know uh, is what is the best way to get this tape measure to everybody? Should we send uh, should we send this to the district reps as an entire package once we decide once everybody gets their teams, or would you like this to be sent out to each individual family? Either way, Special Olympics will be providing the tape measure for every competitor so that uh, everybody has the same measurements. And this is a uh, 16 foot five, about five meter uh, tape measure. Um, maybe it's just a little bit longer so that um, everybody has the same measurements. Um, the other thing are the other two components, which I believe everybody should be able to have, either use a stopwatch like you see on the left hand side, which is uh, that little black. Lisa, or, uh, um, yeah. Angela, I believe we lost your audio there. Lost my audio? Yeah, I, can I still wasn't hear hearing you. you, sorry. Can you can you hear me or no? Yeah, you're good. Okay, Mike, you're can fine. you? Yeah, you're fine now. Yeah, there was a period there where it was okay. silent. Maybe it's mine. That's okay. Let me back up here and let's go back to the stopwatch. So we can either use a stopwatch if you have one of those handy to um, to record the shuttle run or the plank, but most everybody has a smartphone now so that you can use that um, on your handheld device and use the stopwatch mode. So either way, um, so this is something that um, Special Olympics Maryland would not provide. So we're hoping that everybody has something. If there is a need for it, please reach out and let me know and we'll see how we can support you there. The other piece of equipment that you'll need is um, masking tape, and it doesn't have to be masking tape, it can be anything. And that's usually to help the athlete with the beginning point, the starting point um, uh, of the standing long jump. So these are our three pieces that you will need to, um, to record uh, all of your data. So how does this get scored? So there are three different times that the scores will be recorded. The first score is the sum of the points awarded based on performance in each of the tests. Participants, as you can see, can earn up to 12 points for each test. At the midpoint, participants are awarded points up to 12 for each test based on percent improvement. And the next subsequent slides will show you what exactly does that look like. The sum of the first score and midpoint score will be used for divisioning. Finally, at the end of the competition, participants will test one more time and be awarded for percent improvement from the midpoint. The final score will be the sum of the scores from all three testing dates. So this is the example of what the first score will be based on. So as you can see, points awarded zero through 12. So on your plank based on time, then your shuttle based on time in seconds there, and your standing long jump based on centimeters. And there will be a, what's called a smart sheet, very similar to what a, an Excel spreadsheet looks like or a document looks like that will be coming from Special Olympics National or International that will have all of this information embedded into your spreadsheet or your smart sheet. So you do not, as a coach or a district rep, you do not have to calculate anything, giving you just the ability to record. And I just wanted to reassure you of that. So here for your midpoint and final, didn't you were get you were awarded your points zero through 12% improvement. And this is how your scores are calculated. So your Score number two is percent improvement from your baseline to your midpoint and score number three, your midpoint to your finals. Do we have any questions as to how that particular piece works? Everybody okay with this? Again, this is very different than anything SOMD has done before. So if, as you go through this and you have any questions throughout your process, because I know right now you're just getting information, please feel free to reach out to me or anybody on my team that was listed here on the presentation. So your administrative part of things, you're all familiar with how this works. This hasn't changed. So um, we will require the uh, application of uh, participation, please. And each pair that uh, participates needs to submit 
this particular paperwork. So my district reps that are here online with me right now, please remind your student athletes that they need to fill this out, submit this to you. Uh, and you can email me directly with your paperwork. It would be easiest if it was everything was collected at once, but I understand that's not how, um, how that happens sometimes. So I am okay with uh, you sending it to me, um, but just make sure that you let me know um, what school this comes from and that you yourself have looked over this paperwork to ensure that it's done correctly, please. The other piece is a class A clearance. So this has changed a little bit uh, to, we've heard um, a lot of um, options and ideas um, over the past year or so as to, can we make this a little bit easier and a little bit more streamlined online? And the answer is yes. So we are now using at Special Olympics Maryland Volunteer Hub uh, to keep track of um, everyone who is a volunteer and needs a background check. So, um, and when you get the, uh, again, the slideshow presentation, you'll be able to click on Volunteer Hub and go through the process of editing and adding any information. And at the end, it'll ask you to do the background check. And if there is some question as to what this looks like, you can click right here. And then there's a video um, from our volunteer director that walks you through the entire steps. So again, new procedure, background check using Volunteer Hub. So this will be new for every single coach this year, but anybody participating in this particular program, please have them go through Volunteer Hub. And the other piece, which everybody is familiar with, is the Protective Behaviors Certification. So again, this was modified to be a little bit easier, all in one place location. This is done at, through the link that you see here. It's a short 14 minute video and a 10 question quiz. At the end of that 10 question quiz, um, the participant will be getting a certificate of completion. Please forward that to coaches at somd.org, please, so that we can upload it into uh, GMS. Um, Mike, I'm gonna ask just a quick thing from you. If our coaches were already up to date and um, they didn't need to update their background check or protective behaviors. Did we decide that they were that they were okay and did not need to do this all over again, or did you want them to? No, nope, right? absolutely. No, let's keep it simple. If they've already submitted it and they're it's yep. valid through the season, they're good to go. Perfect. Good for three Thank years. Okay, yep. perfect. Thank you. So that um, that is a district rep kind of uh, information tag for you to tell your coaches. And as soon as you know who will be participating as coaches or pairs or any of those people that you know are going to be involved, send me the list and I can look it up on GMS for you and give you right away the information um, if they need to complete any of this information or not. So that way we're not having to, um, to wait on, on anything. You can get me that information right away and then, then everybody can get caught up to date. So thanks Mike for that clarification. And as a reminder, please, coaches and district reps, please double check all paperwork before submitting anything to Special Olympics Maryland. Um, and I, I know we keep this here just as a reminder, not to say that they cannot compete, but I'd hate for anything as we move forward, um, especially when um, we could have this um, big culminating event at the end, um, if the paperwork wasn't submitted correctly or I'm missing some components, I don't want any, um, anybody left behind. So please take your time and ensure that the paperwork um, is done correctly. So with this, uh, one of the things that we don't have yet is our smart sheet and that's okay because this is you know, very uh, comprehensive and detailed. This is something that, um, again, it's bigger than SOMD. So we will wait patiently for this smart sheet and make sure that it is correct. As soon as we get that, um, what we will do is we will create a how-to video. Uh, you don't need to come back and, and come on to another webinar and we will walk you through step-by-step step as to how to complete the smart sheet and where to submit the information. So just hang in there with us a little bit and then we'll get you what you need. With that, those coaches, in case uh, if you're on and you don't remember who to submit your stuff to, which you should, but just in case, 
Um, these are our three district reps, and this is how you can reach them um, either email or by cell phone. So much appreciated to Tim, Barb, and Katie for jumping on board with this. You guys are awesome, and I'm looking forward to working with everybody again. Here's our big piece. When do we need to do this? This is how this looks. So today uh, we are having our webinar. This week, um, I would like district reps you to get this information out to your coaches. That includes this particular PowerPoint plus the coaches guide. And then you can see from the rest what we're looking for as far as score submissions. Right here in the middle, October 2nd, that is a hard date, please. Your application for participation to me and gather that, scan it, and email that to me as quick as you can, but October 2nd is our hard date, please. So we've got our first score submission. We've got um, about two weeks to get that information and get everybody going, and then you can see our subsequent dates after that. So our International Youth Festival being held virtually in Bangkok, Thailand, which is so exciting, uh, will be the 20th to the 23rd, and I will have more details from uh, from SOI on what this festival looks like and um, how we as a, as a state are going to be able to participate with this. So keep on hold for that information and I'll let you know what that looks like. Anybody right now, I'll stop here for a moment. Anybody got any questions, thoughts? Um, I had a question about, I don't know if I missed in the beginning, um, are the students only participating in one event or are they doing all three or can they choose how many they're participating in? Great question, Katie. I appreciate that. You know, this is a, uh, like an all or nothing. So you have three, uh, three fitness pieces, the, the student, the pair, the unified pair will compete in all three. So okay. they have scores for all three. Yes. Yep. Got it. All right, so here are, let's go over some resources real quick. Uh, again, um, you have all uh, those of you working with us here at SOMD are, are accustomed to, you will get a coach's resource and rules guidebook. This is kind of very similar to what you already have here in the PowerPoint, but um, just a little bit different format if you, and, um, and our, of course, our, all our forms that are related to this. All of the videos are also embedded in the guidebook. So again, nobody has to go looking for anything. So if you lose the PowerPoint, hopefully you keep the resource guide, but all your videos are embedded in both areas. And uh, of course, your quick reference guide uh, to coaching our Special Olympics athletes. Um, a uniforms and or equipment. So what we're asking is to remind the ADs uh, of each of your schools that we would prefer that the student athletes wear a Special Olympics uh, uh, shirt. And I will get to our video requirements and needs as we go further, uh, further on down. If they don't have access to them or there's, there's an issue, please reach out to me as quickly as you can. Um, it, just in case if, if I can, um, if I need to be able to, to get anybody uh, a shirt, um, I'll, see what, uh, I'll see what I can, uh, to, can dig into my budget and be able to help out. Um, but I'd rather do this sooner than later because that first submission um, is going to come up pretty quick. So again, you've all seen this slide, which is our uniform slide, um, you know, where we would like our unified sports logo. Again, nothing has changed. This is exactly the same as any other sports that we do. Um, and if anybody was going to get new uniforms specifically for this, because this is something, again, unique and special and need the logo, let me know and I can provide it. This is something that um, we don't normally see um, in sports like tennis or bocce, you know, all the time, but we do want to, you know, emphasize this. The responsibility is to give maximum effort. And so what we don't want necessarily want is for someone to do their very first uh, score and be really super low. And then all of a sudden the next two or three just be off the charts going in the other direction. So we want to make sure that everybody is giving the maximum effort every single time. 
uh, regardless of outcome. And so our coaches have that responsibility for the health and safety uh, of our athletes above all else and setting some good examples for their student athletes. This is our maximum effort known as our honest effort rule and um, I can let you read that at your own time. This has been a standard for Special Olympics. So video requirements. This is something that came down from again SOI so please adhere to this. Wearing a Special Olympics branded shirt, solid colors are preferred. Stripes, patterns, white and green, you know, uh, avoid wearing things like that, please. Um, or avoid wearing colors, same colors as your background. Uh, record your video horizontally in a place without a lot of background noise or wind, if possible. I understand not all these things can happen every single time, but try to encourage your coaches and the athletes to be consistent in every single um, place they record. Make sure you frame your video, your entire body, head to toe is on the screen and record a test video as a, as a suggestion to make sure everything looks good and sounds good. Um, and even better if you can have someone hold the, full, the phone to record you, or as um, I like to use, we have a, a tripod in my house and um, I record my son in every sport that he can play or, or you know, record for his teachers for a band for that matter, because he plays the saxophone. So these are your video requirements. Um, and so what I've done is just provided the media how to's here in this presentation, won't necessarily go into great detail with that. Uh, you and your coaches uh, can take a moment and just read through how this all works. Again, this that shoot horizontally, try to keep everything smooth and steady. Um, make sure we got some good light, uh, record good audio, uh, speak slowly, uh, clearly. Um, and you know, and what's possible and what's not as far as how to do these recordings. And that pretty much wraps up what we um, we're going to be talking about here with this presentation. Um, Monica or John Paul, have I missed anything that uh, needs to be addressed for the good of the order here? You know, uh, what I was going to do is maybe just give a little context to how this opportunity came about. I think it might be in intriguing to everyone. Um, so, uh, again, I, I work, a lot of my work is with uh, developing relationships with international sport federations, which has been really helpful in engaging uh, uh, opportunities to work with national federations, giving our athletes access to new competition opportunities, higher coaching, uh, better officials, all these types of things. And so we keep working with international federations to try to build these. And part of that is we go to a conference every year called the Sport Accord Convention. And the Sport Accord Convention is hosted by an organization, and uh, excuse me, but I'm gonna get into the alphabet soup. We're all used to our acronyms in Special Olympics. So in international sport, there's an organization called uh, GAFE, which is the Global Association of International Sport Federations. So that's inclusive of every uh, sport, Olympic and non-Olympic. So if you give an example like uh, FIFA for soccer would be there, or FIBA from basketball alongside of the World uh, bowling federation or powerlifting federation. Those two sports are not in the Olympics, but they're, they're at this conference with many others, many sports that are in the, so to speak, on deck circle to try to uh, aspire to be part of the Olympics. Um, all, so part of this convention is we meet with our, with our sport federation partners. Um, last three years, they've added a component to this as it's gone around, around the globe. And last year it was in, um, Australia in the Gulf coast. And, uh, to sort of bring some legacy to the, lo the host uh, country, wherever the event takes place, they created a youth festival through an organization called uh, United Through Sports. And last year, uh, we were invited to, to speak at this United, uh, United Through Sport Festival, myself and a, a Special Olympics athlete from Australia um, uh, um, gave a presentation and all the presidents of the International Sport Federations were there. We gave us a chance to really talk about what we do as an organization they're very impressed. Uh, and the special needs athlete's name was Ben Hack, and he did a super job of challenging them to, to do more for Special Olympics. And as a result of that, uh, we were invited to be part of this uh, event here, which, like everything else, is, you know, we didn't have the conference this year. So we're instead, they, they are trying to do this uh, United Through Sport Festival. Um, what's unique about this for us in context of a historical moment is that 
we are our athletes in this case special Olympics maryland athletes in particular are going to be featured alongside of olympic athletes and paralympic athletes so it really establishes special olympics as one of the top three multi-sport organizations in the globe so uh, in my again i've been around for many years uh, i don't recall any other time uh, where we had a chance to share that platform um, alongside of those two other organizations so um, anyone who's participating in this, I just want you to feel and know that you're part of a, a, a really pivotal moment for the organization. When we talk about inclusion, this is, there's no better statement here than seeing our athletes featured in this type of platform. Um, so really excited to have your involvement. Um, again, we've, we've talked to the, to the organizers, the, the UTS or United Through Sports organizers, organization, their organizers, and we told them about your involvement and they understand the scale and scope of what we're doing. So um, I don't want to put any extra pressure on you or anything like that, but it's going to be a huge, huge, huge event in the sense that of, of where we are in the, the moment. Um, so when we talk about it being in Bangkok, again, that's where they're producing this show. So it really is virtual. It could be anywhere in the world. It just happens to be that that's where uh, United Through Sport is, is based. So they're going to produce the show there. Um, our athletes, again, will be featured with their videos. Uh, for those that um, get selected will be featured alongside of these other athletes, and we'll see how that takes place in, in November. All participants will receive um, a, a certificate that will most likely be signed by the president of the International Olympic Committee, president of the IPC, um, and our, our CEO, Mary Davis, as well. So um, again, uh, not to do more of a sales pitch, but uh, re really happy to have you guys all involved. Angel, that presentation was outstanding, just really clear, concise. At least for me, I, was, I thought it was really well done, um, but wanted to hear if anybody had any questions. And then Monica, if you want to add anything else to that. I know we're excited. Um, Barb, Katie, these are, you know, and Tim's not here, but these are some, uh, my shining stars, if you will, John, um, is, as far as my district reps go, when I say district, this means they represent um, the counties here in Maryland and they have exceptional relationships with their coaches. And so I, you know, there's, there's the state's pretty big. There's a lot of people um, but in order to get this pilot and do this right and well and represent our country, if you will, um, you know, I asked these three on board with us because um, I know we'll get the best results. And so we are extremely honored and ex super excited to, to get started and, um, and just know that, you know, whatever we can do to support um, SOI and, and this entire organization, that's, that's what we're excited to do. So um, I don't know, Monica, anything else for us? Nope, I'm all good. I appreciate everything and I look forward to continuing to work with you and all of the schools and the students over the next couple of months. It will be fun. Barb, Katie, anything you got for us? You, you, you ladies ready for all this? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, well, we are now, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are now, Mike. Oh, we, can, we can't thank you enough. We really appreciate yeah. it. It's all, it's all right. I, I appreciate it. Mike, anything for us? No, no, other than we're, we're truly, as to repeat what you said to a bit, we're truly honored with this opportunity. Uh, we're thrilled. We've got uh, uh, some of our, our top-notch district reps um, uh, moving it forward. Uh, and uh, this is a, a great opportunity to show the world what uh, Special Olympics Maryland and Special Olympics in general can uh, can do. And uh, we'll certainly be here to, uh, not just Angela, but myself, anything we can do to help make it a success. Um, we, will, we will do what we can. So thank you in advance. <laughs> thank you, Mike. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, look for an email from me here shortly with both this presentation. Um, I'm not sure how to get the recording that quickly, but I will figure that out. Um, and the, um, the uh, coach's guide. And, and again, ladies, as you go along and when, when Tim gets on board with any of your coaches, anybody has any questions, um, you know, something that, oh, that we forgot, didn't bring up or didn't mention, you know how to find me and my cell is with me all the time and um, be happy to answer anything. Uh, directly from your coaches or from from you and um, that's all I have thank you team for everything that you are going to do that you have done and uh, let's get this going everybody take care okay thank you